In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between state variables and path variables in thermodynamics. And to begin, I want to start with a very basic characterization of what we're trying to do in applying thermodynamics. The basic idea, as we've seen, is we've got some system. There's a boundary around that system. Everything else in the universe is the surroundings, whatever we've decided to call the universe, assuming nothing else matters outside of our little bubble of uh, the universe that we want to or that we can care about. The system undergoes some process and the process involves a change in state. Say we've got a system in a state, let's just give that a letter, S1, for the initial state. The system undergoes some process and we may or may not know the details of that process in terms of how it goes down, if it's a chemical reaction, the reaction mechanism, the number of elementary steps, all that kind of stuff. Maybe all we know is that we reach some final state, S2, of the system. And in changing from the state S1 to the, S, to the state S2, there may be some exchange of energy with the surroundings. Maybe heat transfer, maybe work is done, something along those lines. There may be changes in other variables related to the state of the system as the process occurs. And we can kind of think about two different types of variables given this framework for what thermodynamic systems do, undergoing processes that take them from state one to state two. There are variables that relate to the states themselves, sort of frozen in time without any knowledge of what happened before we got to that state or what's going to happen after we leave that state. We can sort of pin these variables individually to the states S1 and S2 and ask, for example, if I know the positions and velocities of all the particles within my system, there's got to be some way to calculate the value of a state variable just with that knowledge. So state variables in a way belong to or can be pinned to the states themselves. And generally, if S1 and S2 are not identical, we're going to see some differences in one or more state variables associated with our system. There's another kind of variable of interest in thermodynamics, and it relates to the details of how we got from S1 to S2. How many steps did it take? How long did it take? All that kind of stuff. These cannot really be pinned or ascribed to the individual states S1 and S2, and they're thus called path variables. What they can be ascribed to is the specific path that the system took in going from state one to state two. And so in some sense, this is just a very rough kind of abstract characterization. They belong to this arrow. Path variables belong to the specific path that gets us from state one to state two. Now the whole discussion so far has probably seemed very abstract, but we can bring these ideas of state and path variables into very concrete terms by looking at changes in state in our everyday lives, which happen all the time, everywhere. So take, for example, climbing a mountain, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, which is pictured here. There are multiple ways we can get from the base of the mountain to the summit. We can take the direct path that's sort of shown X here in green. We can take an indirect windy path, Y, to get from the base to the summit. If we think about the change in height in going from the base to the summit, the change in height or our height at any particular state doesn't depend on where we came from or how we got there, right? It just depends on how high we are off the ground, which is something we can measure at any point along the mountain. So our height is an example of a state variable here. We could call that H. The height is a state variable, the change in height is a state variable that is completely independent of the path we took. It's the same for paths x and y. What about a path variable associated with this climb up the mountain? Well, clearly there's a difference between x and y. y is a much longer path than x, for example. So an example of a path variable that depends on whether we take root x or y is the distance traveled. Clearly, the total distance traveled depends on the specific details of the process in going from the base to the summit. So the distance traveled is an example 
of a path variable. In class, I often use the analogy of a road trip going from, for example, Atlanta to Athens. Here's my home in Atlanta. Here's Athens, Georgia, and three different routes to do that, two in gray and one in blue. We can identify some additional path variables associated with these three trips the ways they, and the ways they differ. So, for example, the time required is very clearly a path-dependent variable here since the specific route we take dictates the time. The time belongs to the specific route we take on some level, right? Also, gasoline consumed related to the distance traveled, right? The farther we go, the more gasoline required. And so gasoline consumption is a path-dependent variable for this road trip from Atlanta to Athens. On the other hand, there are a number of state variables that we can identify for this trip. One example of a state variable is temperature. Assuming that the temperature doesn't fluctuate over time, which is a good enough assumption for this hypothetical example, the temperature in Athens just depends on the state of being in Athens, not how we got there at all. Same in Atlanta. So both the temperature and the change in temperature are completely independent of the path taken in going from Atlanta to Athens. Maybe Athens is a little bit cooler because it's a little bit further north or something along those lines, right? There are others that I'll leave to you uh, to think through. Hopefully this gives you a sense intuitively of a state variable versus a path variable. State variable depends only on the positions and velocities of particles within a system in a particular state of the system. It has nothing to do with how the system got in that state, the path taken to reach that state, or where it's headed in the future. Path variables actually cannot be ascribed to individual states and are entirely dependent on the very specific and intricate details of the path taken from the initial to the final state. So in calculating path variables, we often need to actually use calculus. We need to add up a ton of infinitesimal changes, for example, as we drive along the road from Atlanta to Athens to determine our overall gasoline consumption, to determine the total distance traveled that's going to involve doing an integral over the entire path. We generally won't do that kind of math in introductory chemistry courses, but in advanced physical chemistry courses, you absolutely will do those kinds of integrals. This slide just formalizes these definitions of state variables and path variables. A state variable or function is a variable that is characteristic of the state of the system independent of how it came to be in that state. And in chemical systems, state variables are represented with capital letters and four that we're interested in are listed here. We're going to elucidate more, at least one more, in the videos in this section and perhaps in the future. U, internal energy, is a state variable. Pressure, volume, and temperature are also state variables that depend only on the state of the system. A path variable, on the other hand, depends on the specific process or path between the initial and final states. And the two most important for chemical thermodynamics, the two most important path variables are heat and work. Both depend on the specific details of how we got from state one to state two. Work might be the more intuitive one to understand. It takes a lot more work, if we go back up to the previous slide, to climb Mount Kilimanjaro along path Y than it does to use path X, because we're covering a larger distance in doing so, right? But heat is also a path-dependent function. How the temperature changes, for example, as we heat a system from temperature 1 to temperature 2, has a big impact on the extent of heat transfer. And for both Q and W, in complicated situations, we need to use integration over the path to calculate the total values of Q and W. We won't do that in this course. Making some assumptions to make calculations in Q and W pretty simple using the equations we've actually already seen, mc delta t, negative p delta v. But again, in advanced courses, we may need to use integrals to calculate those.